Hello students, welcome to a video class on Machine Tools Lab by the Department of Mechanical Engineering, TKM College of Engineering. Through this video, we will be familiarizing with a milling machine and also seeing how to perform a gear cutting operation on it. Milling machine is used to remove metals from a workpiece with the help of a revolving tool known as milling cutter. It is used to machine flat, rough and irregular surfaces by feeding the workpiece against the rotating milling cutter. According to the position of the spindle, milling machines are classified as horizontal milling machine and vertical milling machine. Let's see the parts of a horizontal milling machine. Base. This is the foundation on which the whole machine is mounted. It carries the entire load of the machine. This part is made up of cast iron due to the high compressive strength. Column. This is a hollow member which contains all the driving gears and it supports the knee, saddle, table etc. It is mounted vertically on the base. Knee. This is a casting that supports the saddle and the table. All the gearing mechanism is enclosed within the knee. It is supported and adjusted by a vertical positioning screw. Elevating screw. Also known as vertical positioning screw, an elevating screw is used to adjust the knee up and down by raising or lowering the lever either with the help of hand or by power feed mechanism. Saddle. Saddle is placed between the table and the knee. It works as an intermediate part between them. It slides over the guideways provided on the knee. The main function of a saddle is to provide a horizontal movement for the workpiece. Table. This is a rectangular casting placed on the top of the saddle. It holds the work or the work holding devices while machining. During machining, the workpiece can be moved in three mutually perpendicular directions as per the requirements. The vertical motion along the Z axis is materialized by moving the knee up and down using the elevating screw. The horizontal motion along the X axis is performed by moving the table. This is done by rotating the transverse wheel. While the horizontal transverse motion along the Y axis is done by moving the saddle, this is done by rotating the cross feed hand wheel. Overhanging arm. It is a horizontal beam present at the top of the column. It serves as a bearing support for the arbor. This arm is adjustable so that the bearing support may be provided nearer to the milling cutter. Spindle The spindle is the main part of a machine which holds the tool in the right place. It is driven by electric motor through the gear trains which are present inside the column. Arbor this is a mechanical part which is used as an extension of the spindle in a horizontal milling machine. It is fitted on the spindle whenever required. This holds the tool and moves it in the correct direction. Arbor supports. An arbor support is a device to support the outer end or intermediate point of an arbor. It can be clamped anywhere on the overarm. Now we will see how a gear can be made using a milling machine. Gear cutting operation is a process of cutting equally spaced identical gear teeth on a gear blank by handling it on a universal dividing head and then indexing it. Now we shall go through the indexing operation. Indexing is a process of dividing the periphery of a workpiece into any number of equal parts. The main component used for this operation is a universal dividing head. As indicated by its name, universal. A universal dividing head can be used to do all types of indexing on a milling machine, making it the most popular and common type of indexing arrangement. You must have studied the four different types of indexing methods, namely direct indexing, simple indexing, compound indexing and differential indexing in detail during your theory classes. Here we have chosen a simple indexing method for gear cutting. Now we move on with the gear cutting operation on a milling machine. The aim of the experiment is to cut the maximum number of teeth from the given blank using a 20 dp cutter. The first step is to measure the outer diameter of the given blank and find out the maximum number of teeth that can be made. Here the outer diameter of the blank is 4.1 inches. We name it as OD. 
we are provided with the diametrical pitch DP as 20. We can relate outer diameter, number of teeth on the gear blank and the diametrical pitch as outer diameter OD equals to N plus 2 divided by DP. That makes outer diameter into diametrical pitch equal to N plus 2. Resulting in the equation for number of teeth N as outer diameter into diametrical pitch minus 2. In our case here we will be having 4.1 into 20 minus 2 that comes to 80 teeth. We have done all these calculations based on the rough outer surface measurement. We need to make a finished outer surface before cutting the gear. For that we assume the number of teeth as n is equal to 7 to 6 and using that find out a new outer diameter. Now substituting the number of teeth n as 7 to 6 and diametrical pitch dp as 20 we now find out the final outer diameter required. Here the equation comes as outer diameter equal to 7 to 6 plus 2 divided by 20 giving a result as 3.96 inches as the final finished outer diameter required. Now we need to make the correction for outer diameter of the given blank as 3.9 inches. For that we need to perform an outer diameter correction operation. Outer diameter correction is done on a lathe. Put the blank on the mandrel and turn it to get the required diameter by using the lathe. Now our workpiece is ready for gear cutting. Before starting our work, we have to select the proper index plate and find out the depth of cut. Depth of cut is related with diametrical pitch dp. The relation is d equal to 2.156 divided by dp. In this particular case, 2.156 divided by 20 equals to 0 0.1078 inches that is around 2.738 mm. Therefore, we fix the depth of cut as 2.738 mm. The indexing method followed here is simple indexing. For that, we have three indexing plates available. These plates have concentric circles of holes with their different numbers as shown. The indexing crank movement is decided as 40 divided by number of teeth. The reason behind this can be seen with the help of the figure. Here, the index plate is mounted on a shaft with one side attached to the index crank and the other end having a worm single thread. The worm attached to this crank is engaged with the worm wheel connected with the index head spindle. So, 40 teeth on the worm wheel means one complete turn on index crank causes the spindle and work to rotate 1 40th of a turn. That is, for calculating the indexing or the number of turns of crank is to simply divide 40 by the number of divisions required to be cut on the workpiece. In this case, we have the number of teeth as 7 to 6. So, 40 divided by 7 to 6 can be simplified as 10 divided by 19. So, we select the circular plate with 19 holes. For cutting each teeth, we will now engage the index pin with the help of sector arm at every 10th hole in the circular plate with 19 holes. This way, we move 10 holes for cutting the first teeth and again move another 10 holes for the second teeth and so on till we complete the full circular blank. After selecting the indexing procedure, we move on to the tool setting. The intention of tool setting is to change the cutting tool with a DP cutter. For that, remove the arbor support, collars and milling cutter. Then insert DP cutter, collars and refix the arbor support. By adjusting the saddle, align the tool and tailstock properly. Finally, lock the saddle. Next, we move on with setting up the workpiece. Fix the index plate with 19 holes in the dividing head. Insert the tapered end of the mandrel with the workpiece in headstock of the dividing head. Align the other end of the mandrel with the tailstock and tighten the screws.
Ensuring that all the requirements are satisfied, we can move on with milling the gear. Switch on the machine and set the cutter in such a manner that it just touches the periphery of the workpiece. Move the cutter away from the workpiece by rotating the transverse hand wheel. Now set the vertical hand crank wheel dial to zero. Lift the table using a vertical hand crank wheel to get 2.738 mm depth of cut. Rotate the dividing head handle in the clockwise direction and set the lock pin in hole number 19. Tighten the lock nut provided at the back side of the dividing head. Switch on the machine and advance the work towards the cutter uniformly by rotating the transverse hand wheel. With this, we have completed the first slot. Mark the tenth hole from the initial hole. Loosen the lock nut behind the dividing head. Locate the selector pin in the tenth hole by rotating the handle in the clockwise direction. Then tighten the lock nut. Cut the second slot. Now we have completed cutting the first tooth. Repeat the same procedure of indexing and cut the second tooth. Continue these steps till you finish cutting 7 to 6 teeth on the gear blank. After finishing the milling operation, Switch off the machine and take out the gear from the mandrel. Thank you.